Are you ready to kickstart your week with some dirt slinging and tire slaying action motorsports radio that packs the biggest guests? Hi, Ken Block here. Hey, my name's Jolene Van Butte. What's up, Brian Deegan? Vaughn Ginn Jr. here. They've been thrown into one show that has broken down the barriers of what a motorsports radio show should be. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, with support from General Tire, KMC Wheels, Rigid Industries, Dirtfish, Gibson Exhaust, and MTX Audio. With your host, who also happens to spend his weekends flying 800 horsepower trucks through the dirt, Jim Beaver. When was the last time you saw an off-road rally driver begging to get behind the wheel of a NASCAR Indy car? Yep, not happening, but you sure see these pavement racers begging to drive our cars. And his partner in crime every week, a self-proclaimed Canadian moto chick who was jumping triples and taking podiums before most guys even learned to ride. Amy Hood. No one knows how to say my last name. Like, is it really that hard? Amy Hood, like I'm from the hood. Don't get it twisted. Sit back, strap in, and be prepared to join us as we take you through a motorsports ride like no other. Here is the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other, Jim Beaver. Good morning and welcome to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, rocking and rolling another week, another show. And I got to tell you, we have a slammed one for you today. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. This week is definitely the case. Man, RJ Anderson, my good friend Katie Osborne. We got uh, Jeff Alessi on the line, Brett Q, Joe Duncan from Terracross. I don't know, Amy, that's, uh, that's one hell of a guest lineup. Oh, when it rains, it pours. Um, yes, we have a stoked, super awesome, badass lineup. I can't wait. Um, I love all of our guests who are going to be on today. But I just have a serious mishap here. Um, I was going to have a little bit of yogurt for breakfast. And I've been sitting here writing my notes, just kind of prepping for the show. And I guess I forgot that I opened up my yogurt. And then I went to go shake it and mix it up. And it just exploded everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm covered head to toe in strawberry yogurt. But, uh, nice. Yeah. You'd be nice and... Uh, <laughs> That's how my morning's going right now. Yeah. Well, at least it's strawberry. At least you'll smell good for the next two hours while we're doing radio. I mean, oh, yeah, it's man. And, um, moisturizing, too, I bet. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, my goodness. It's so uh, funny. <laughs> all right. We're going to let you get cleaned up. We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, uh, Amy and I, uh, I don't know, we got uh, got some stuff to talk about. Our buddy Hubert uh, definitely uh, had some shenanigans going on and not cool. But uh, we'll be back after this commercial break on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. 
MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. And uh, man, before we get into things, um, got to bring something to uh, everyone's attention. Happened over the weekend. I got a uh, text from my good buddy Hubert yeah. Rowland uh, over there at Nitro Circus. Everybody's favorite redneck. Uh, also does a lot with Terracross and that. But uh, I got to say, I know uh, he's been pumping out the social media. Um, I know uh, just about everybody in our, our you know communities have. I mean, I even saw Ryan Villapoto pushing some stuff out for Hubert. But uh, this weekend, he was at a UTV event, I believe. Uh, I, I can't remember where it was at. I think uh, possibly Tennessee. Um, but regardless, anyways, go and check out Hubert's Instagram profile. His his truck, he has a, a huge Super Duty truck, a Chevrolet, uh, like three-quarter ton truck, trailer, Razor. The whole thing was stolen out of the hotel parking lot. And uh, I got to tell you, there's there's not much I hate more than thieves. To me, that's just uh, – I know. Um, it's just sad. I mean, Hubert's a good dude. Um, you know, just a, a humble guy. He'd give you the shirt off his back, uh, always helping everybody. And, you know, here's a guy who, uh, you know, I, I've heard his story many times, didn't come from much. And, uh, you know, he still doesn't have a lot. Everybody thinks, oh, he's with Pastrana. You know, he's, he's rich and famous and this and that, you know, and it's totally not that way. I mean, Hubert hustles for everything. He's got hard worker. And uh, to see this, I mean, that's, you know, like Hubert said, he's like, this truck is, is, is what makes me money, you know, hauling things around yeah. for Travis and everything else. And now he's out of a truck, a razor, a trailer, the whole works. It's uh, just crap, you know? Yeah. And um, the razor and trailer were seen on Highway 27 in Chattanooga heading south. So, I mean, if you guys are kind of in that general area, um, keep your eyes out. I mean, there's been a lot of times that we've done, um, I know people, you know, made social media posts and we've been able to actually find the stolen vehicles, dirt bikes, trailers, um, razors, whatever it is. Um, actually, funny story from um, the L.A. Supercross. One of my friends took a Snapchat photo of this bike in the back of a truck because it was in there really weird. And he's like, just Snapchatted the picture of it. And then a couple minutes later, someone said that the, this bike has been stolen. Keep an eye out for it turns out the snapchat was the stolen bike and they found the license plate of the uh um of the guy and were able to actually find his um his dirt bike so again if you guys see this beautiful razor and trailer i mean take a picture of it snap it you take a photo of the vehicle driving or the person who's in camp the great thing about social media is it um you know we can connect really fast and easily and hopefully you know bring this thing home so yeah and i'm not opposed to a baseball bat to kneecaps or something like that in this situation <laughs> seriously you go into a gas station and they're there tee off on them if you've got a golf club or a baseball bat tee off on them i give you i give you my permission i swear huber to do the same and so would pastrana and anybody this is uh i don't know i just hate thieves you know you know, it, we people know. work hard for what they've got, and for somebody just to shortcut in, uh, you know, and, and take it uh, to me, that's that's lame. That is very. The thing very is, lame. is, like, I'm one of those people who trusts everybody. Like, I have a very bad habit of leaving my doors unlocked, leaving my purse down if I go grab like a coffee or something. Like, I trust people, and I, I'm learning that I I can't. I had this off-duty officer like come to me when I was at Starbucks because I had like, a bunch of my stuff down, and I was working, and I went up for a coffee, and he's like, honey, I could have stole your purse right here, there, and like, I'm just like, I don't think about that stuff, because I personally would never do that to anybody, and it's sad and pathetic that people are so low and have to do that, do that to others, but, uh, you know, what can I say? 
it's a bad a bad time when we got to worry about all of our all of our stuff. So yeah. hopefully we'll be able to find this for you, but you hurt so. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know what more to say. So, uh, yeah, definitely Hubert's posted up his, uh, his email address, all his contact info, uh, you know, on his social media, mainly his Instagram. Uh, so you can direct message him through their email. And if you've got any ideas, any, anything, um, any leads, if you've seen it anywhere, definitely, uh, you know, contact Hubert. He would love to, uh, get this back in some way, shape or form because, uh, it's oh, definitely, fine. Yeah, it's definitely his livelihood, so. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I don't know. I had a pretty good weekend. Went up to the mountains this weekend, got away from things, and uh, had a little bit of interesting uh uh, on my way home, uh, stopped in at a random gas station in a small town called Peoples Valley, Arizona, and uh, went into a convenience store with my daughter. And uh, lo and behold, uh, I got to give a shout out to a listener to our show named Jameson. Uh, he was behind the counter there and recognized the voice. Didn't recognize me, but recognized the voice. Heard us on air and uh, was was kind of cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So what's up, man? Um, that's cool. I always want to hear, you know, people. I wish someone would recognize my voice. I mean, come on. I Don't I have a unique voice? Yeah. I don't think so. It's not as unique as yours, Jim. I recognize your voice, Hood. Okay, good. Yeah. You, you got one person that does anyways. I don't know. I know, you, I know you guys were out on some bikes this weekend, right? Finally uh, finally oh. able to start uh, riding, riding some moto, huh? Well, kind of, sort of. Um, I had a motocross school scheduled for this Sunday, but it's decided to, to rental downpour every single day. But, I mean, there's no rest for the wicked, and if you want to get better, you got to train in the most adverse conditions. So I sucked it up. Me and my friends, we loaded our bikes up, and we went out to the sand track, hoping that it was going to be okay. It, it, you know, the rain was kind of holding off a little bit. We get there, decided to pour. We're like, you know what, we're here anyways. We unloaded the bikes. And just busted out some motos. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. It was freezing. Um, you had to actually take your goggles off. And it was pointless to you and I with the gloves because they were soaking wet. But And they had added a little bit of mud to the soundtrack. So there are some pretty muddy sections. I actually have a – I totally posted it up on Instagram. I totally wiped out. I have no shame. I don't care. I'll show everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I had a, little, a, little, a couple crashes, actually. But the whole track was surrounded by water. So it looked crazy. It looked like we were driving, like, on a – a track made on a lake because literally on the left and right side of both of everywhere all over the track was filled with water so it was a lot of fun i mean again it kind of prepares you for um any mud races or mud motors or you know if you can if you can ride in that you can ride in anything and that's what i kind of like to tell people is like i mean rain mud snow shine whatever i mean just get it done yeah well you know it's funny you talk about rain and uh i swear to god uh we get like maybe five wow. days of rain here in Arizona a year, at least where I'm at. And so I go out to uh, shoot some video in this, you know, brand new Subaru oh, yeah. WRX STI, right? And uh, I'm like, oh, it's going to be a beautiful day for uh, for rain and that. And uh, go out there and uh, shoot. Uh, it rained uh, it rained the whole time I was going to shoot. So uh, I got one video, like a 10-second clip or something like that, and uh, and that was about it. So, uh, you know, I don't know. i got to get back out there. But uh, I don't know what's going on here in Arizona, man. If never get any rain. I decide I'm going to go out and shoot video, and boom, rain. We have a beautiful week ahead of us, finally. It's our first week that we get, well, in the, in the Celsius, like above 15 degrees, and I think one day gets to 22. But this week I'm actually shooting a really cool campaign for the Ride for Dad for Prostate Cancer. Uh, you guys got to stay tuned. It's going to be dropping either tonight or tomorrow, um, but it's a pretty funny, I mean, if you want to do something really serious and touch on a serious topic, I always like to throw in a little bit of humor. Um, you know, it's... It's uh, it's gonna be good. You guys gotta stay tuned. <laughs> it's awesome. So and that's all I can say. So I just want to get you know the buzz out there. But my uh, prostate cancer ride for dad campaign drops tonight or tomorrow. And stay tuned. It's good. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, uh, definitely gonna be good stuff. You've been pumping out a ton of video lately. Um, I know it's just crazy. I, you had the one video. Uh, uh, your series is doing well, but the one before that, uh, where just you guys were out riding, I don't know if it looked like – I, I wanted to say sand dunes, but it was all sand, but it looked like an awesome place to ride. Oh, yeah. No, it's – I mean, okay, it's, it's like our big sand pit, but it sucks because people are just ruining it. They're having, like, bonfires and, like, wrecking beer bottles and cans and everything and just crap and garbage in the middle of the, of the bowl, like this big sand bowl, and – I mean, people got to respect that there's 
people who like ride and come to these places for entertainment and they gotta preserve preserve it and stop throwing your garbage everywhere. It just bothers me. Every year it becomes a little worse and a little worse and it just really pisses me off that people don't have respect for, you know, like nature or um, beautiful riding facilities. Like, come on. Yeah. I know <laughs> here in, the riding. I know here in Arizona, uh, the big one is, is people like to burn pallets and then you get the nails all over the place and then your bike and your razors pick up nails and it's just, uh, uh, I'm like, come on, go get some real wood, you know, but don't don't burn pallets. It's just a pain for everybody. But uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back, R.J. Anderson, my Polaris Razor teammate, and uh, he's he's going to be calling in. We're going to be talking about uh, some of his new videos that are dropping, uh, a little bit of Razors, a little bit of Lucas Short Course, and a whole lot more here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley Valley, and I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Bieber, Amy Hood here, waiting on our good friend RJ Anderson to uh, give, us a, give us a ring here into the show. But, uh, man, it's... Uh, yeah, later Dude, on in the you, I just watched his video, and yeah. again, like, all these guys making these rad, super cool videos that it, it's like a little movie, Yeah, hey, and I mean, Amy, where you, where... brands have it right on how to do, um, you know, their marketing campaigns nowadays. Like, it's not about dumping a bunch of money and putting in a, a one, two-page spread in, in magazines anymore. It's, you know, spending that money on making really cool productions like, like this Razor video, like, holy smokes. That was super cool, and yeah. I, you know, I want to talk to RJ and see how well, much fun he had. Like, good, like good news is, is we are now joined on the line by RJ Anderson. So you wanted to talk to What's RJ? Up, Here RJ? he goes, Amy. 
Hey, what's going on, guys? Oh, uh, just uh... We're talking about your sweet new video that you guys dropped. But uh, man, how much fun was that? It looked like it was a blast and a little scary at times. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they showed the majority of the not so fun parts. Yeah, uh, but it was cool. I'm, I'm glad we we're able to. Uh, Glad we were able to release that edit. Um, a lot of people, I think, think that these videos we do are just cookie cutter, and everyone tells us, tells me what speed to go, and and that the videos just go flawless. So uh, I think it was cool to show the side of things, the the struggles and the ups and downs and the crashes. Yeah, I I gotta yeah. say. Yeah, no, I, you know, it was, it's been funny because I've always wondered that with these videos. I know you guys build, uh, you know, you guys build multiple cars and they all look the same just in case something happens. But uh, to me, I mean, I don't think this is any knock on your driving ability, but it, it shows a little bit that you're human. But I think it, it really adds and shows the – like you make stuff look so easy in the videos. And I think this this actually, you know, makes everything look more difficult. They're like, oh, crap, it, it really isn't that easy. You know, it took RJ a couple of takes to – to land that you know and um to me i think it, it adds credibility to what you're doing because you're such a good driver that sometimes you make things look too easy and this definitely takes people out of that and go oh man there, there is a, a danger level here yeah definitely that's the one thing i'm i'm glad to, to show is is we don't uh we don't really everything's real that we do it's not all um staged or anything fake or, or movie magic and and it almost looks like that because the the way the Mad Media crew shoots everything, it looks so badass, and and uh, it almost looks like it's not real at times. So uh, in the past, we've had pretty successful shoots, but I think just as these things go on, um, it's just you know pushing the limits of of what what we can do in a razor, and, and it showed in that uh, sound and fury edit that I I definitely took a couple spills, but it was nothing. We were actually able. We had two uh, two cars on set, and we were able to fix them every time, and 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 keep on going to to finish the shoot. Nice, nice. So, so I got to ask, uh, and here's one I've been uh, I've been waiting for an answer for this, but now we got uh, you know the the crashes from uh, XP1K3 out. But uh, going back to XP1K2, I got to ask: when you went into the bowl, the wooden bowl, did you get out of that, or did the car? Did you just like my thought was you just stopped in the thing, laid over on its side because I didn't see how you were getting out of that bowl, or did did you actually were you able I'm, to pull out? I'm literally still in there. I'm still going around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the that's the the joke. But um, no, I actually didn't. I didn't uh, didn't crash. So I don't know. Maybe one day we uh maybe one day we revisit the the wall of death. I think uh that was a cool stunt. It, it blew a lot of people's minds to to see a car uh, enter the wall of death like that. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen any of the YouTube videos of the wall of death, but it's mostly all motorcycles and, and stuff doing it. So uh, yeah. mm -hmm. for uh. For UTL to do it was was pretty rad, and um, I think we need a little bit more a uh, little structural change. I think in the video you guys could see. I mean, the the razor, the weight of the razor was just literally tearing that thing apart as I went around it. So yeah. um, I think uh, I think we can definitely, if we worked on it a little bit more, I can make make something pretty cool out of that. Yeah, for sure. Um, that being said, I know uh, you know not only we have the XP1K, but uh, you also dropped a new series with uh, with Polaris Razor. I know Mad Media, UTV Underground, they've been chasing you around for a while and kind of documenting, uh, you know, what, you know, kind of kind of your background and stuff like that. And obviously, I know uh, you know I know your dad well and uh, the family well because my dad used to race Class Eights against Walker. But um, you know, this is pretty cool. I mean, it takes people, uh, you know, to takes people out and outside and you know and, and brings them into you know kind of your background a lot of hey, people Jim, you're cutting out a little bit yeah am i okay uh we'll try and make a couple adjustments here but it takes people outside a little bit and uh you know brings them into to you know kind of where you came from yeah i know the the new uh the new uh, rg37 video series that we're doing alongside with uh player razor is is pretty cool i think uh a lot of times as as um you know short course racers and stuff you get lost in the just um, even in races as general, you get lost in the just one round to the next, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and what all goes into these things and, and, and who we are as drivers. And that's one thing that I'm, I'm stoked to be able to bring is, it's just a look into kind of like life as a, as a short course racer and, and what goes through for the team and the families and, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I do a lot more than just, just race the short course stuff. So it's, it's cool to be able to kind of get a look at, at what the short course racing entails, but also, uh, you know, the full, uh, kind of just how life rolls for me. So it's, uh, it's a cool little series that Polaris is, is doing and I'm stoked to, to finish that thing out. I think we actually have the next episode dropping uh, later this week. Nice. Nice. And, and you know what? I, I find like those videos really do 
show more of the versatility of this race. They're like, you know, how far you can push it and, you know, how almost indestructible it is. I mean, when you, when you crash, you kind of just kept on going and uh, like videos like this really make me want to go out and buy one. Like, it's like, dang, I want to take this thing off-roading. You know, videos like this appeal to a whole different market than just the racers, but you know, the everyday person who wants to just rip one, rip, rip one around. So. Yeah. One of the, one of the coolest things is, is when uh, people come up to me and, and they actually buy razors after watching, watching the X1K videos. I've had, I want to say at least 10 or 12 people come up to me and say, your video made me buy a razor. So that's a, that's yeah. the ultimate goal, you know, is to, to share a share off road and, and get people to go out and create their own version of, of having fun in a razor. Yeah. Well, exactly. it, it's funny you say that because I can't remember where I was at. I was in a random and I can't, can't even remember. I was in a random Polaris dealership somewhere in the country for some reason, I, it, one of my travels, and I don't even remember where it was at. It tells you, you know, I, tra- you know, you, you guys know, you guys travel as much as I do. But uh, walked in, and they they found out I did radio, and I was involved with the Razor brand. And they're like, "Have you ever had that RJ guy on your show?" And I'm like, "Yeah, quite a few times." And they're like, "Dude, he is awesome!" You know, and it was funny because it's just random Polaris dealership. All they wanted to do was talk about RJ Anderson. They're like, "Oh, you know him? He's awesome." <laughs> that's pretty funny yeah because uh and especially with my face not being directly related with the with the videos um i've been uh you know someone was asking what i do and i've kind of explained some of the racing the razors and stuff and they started going into detail about trying to explain this video they saw one time <laughs> with a guy just going crazy and doing stupid stuff in a razor and i just kind of laughed and I was like yeah that's that's actually me <laughs> so uh it's pretty funny i've had that happen a couple times but that's what's cool about uh doing the viral thing is it reaches so many people i mean youtube yeah. facebook that reaches so much more than even you know just like the tv stuff i do with the trucks so it's pretty cool yeah well that being yeah, said exactly. you guys got a big round coming up this weekend in socal uh you know how is uh you know i can't say uh you know obviously you've got the pro two thing two thing figured out you got to you know your first victory last year uh rolling into this year obviously uh you know you got to have a championship uh, in the sights i mean how has the progression gone from pro light to pro two i mean you know how, how has that changeover been for you as a driver yeah it's pretty gnarly i mean the best way to describe it for me is is when when I stepped into the Pro 2 class, there's like six or seven guys in that class that are supposed to win. I mean, that's what their their sponsors are paying them to do, and that's what every time they line up, they're they're going out there because they're supposed to win that race. And and that's what's gnarly about the Pro 2 classes. In the Pro Life, everyone's just kind of getting their feet wet, and and uh, there's some new guys. A lot of people are trying things all the time, and and you're just kind of looking, searching for podiums and, and consistent finishes. But in the Pro 2 class, there's literally, I mean, it's like, it's the premier class, I call it, in, in, in short course. And there's so many guys that are just supposed to win. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that hunger and that drive that everyone has is just insane. So, it's, uh, yeah, entering my, my third year now, it's, it's, uh, I've learned a lot. And I think, uh, I think this is going to be a good year for us. We had a pretty good opening round, but, um, bought a couple things so i'm excited to get back out there and uh i think we're gonna have a really good weekend coming up here in elsinore yeah you know and i i think the thing with lucas is a series is so long and uh you know and, and especially a guy like you i mean uh you know you can ruin your your truck and completely demolish it on the first uh race of the weekend and uh you know and, and you don't have it any truck for the second one and it really kills you in the points you know and i think with lucas it, it's it's literally a marathon you know you just got to score points at every round and be there you know and and it's about you know consistency and, and getting those top fives you know and you can't take a podium and then you know not place for you know for two rounds in a row after that and finishing 15th it just doesn't work that way you know no exactly yeah there's so much so many guys you know that 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 are so consistent and and we push these trucks so hard it's it's hard Mm -hmm. to stay consistent but it's really it's crazy especially like you said uh if we tear the truck up the first day we do two rounds at a time and and uh, they have to fix it overnight so definitely pulled some all-nighters and and i was i don't know i like i like to stay busy so i wish we raced more but uh eight eight weekends throughout the year is fun but it, it, that is a bummer you know when we if we come off like a bad weekend like round one and two went okay for us but it's like the next weekend i was ready to go i wanted to go back out there because i know we got uh we got more in the tank so that's the one thing that's kind of a bummer is, is racing once a month compared to every weekend or every other weekend but i uh, i guess i'd create more of a problem if we raced every weekend because there's no way there's a i would need a couple more of me yeah, for sure. For well, sure. have you ever dabbled into two wheels? Because, I mean, to fill that schedule, you can always come race dirt bikes with me. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I actually grew up on two wheels. That's that's how uh nice. that's how I started getting into this stuff. Is uh I grew up on two wheels, and my mom's a my mom's a school teacher, kind of in it's kind of like a country area and there's a lot of dirt bike kids that come come through the area and my one thing was my mom would never let me race dirt bikes so uh that's how i actually started racing four wheel stuff because i wanted to race i want to do some dirt bike stuff and she <laughs> put that put the big no on on racing dirt bikes so uh that's kind of how in my younger years i got into racing four wheels so i guess i got to thank my mom for getting me started in the four wheel thing yeah hey. i guess so yeah well yeah. i mean you can always kind of cross train and get yourself a bike and go have some fun, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's, I definitely do like to, like to get out on, on two wheels for fun. It's a great, uh, it is a great cross training, uh, tool. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right, RJ. Well, we're, uh, out of time here, buddy, but, uh, we gotta, we gotta do this more often, get you dialed in for, uh, for some interviews, maybe once a month or something like that to talk some razors and stuff like that. I know we've talked about it. We just need to start making it happen, buddy. Yeah, for sure. I, I, uh, I like you guys, so anytime. <laughs> All right, good to know. R.J. Anderson likes us. Uh, I think that's a good uh, good way to send it to a break, and uh, we'll be back with more here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm R.J. Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, and I'd like to welcome my good friend Katie Osborne to the show. And uh, I don't know, we're we going by Katie, we're we going by Kate. I know you and I have had this discussion for like four years now, Katie. Yeah, you know what's funny is I I have I had many a times thought about the conversation of Katie versus Kate and how it all began back 
in global rallycross. Yeah, yeah, you know, Power Power Nation is calling me Katie these days, but um, you know, Fox Fox is still calling me Kate. Uh, other people who met me when I first started doing my Kate, I'm Kate. So it's kind of awkward. But my website is Katie. But no, I don't know. <laughs> <a> strange conversation <laughs> piece. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. I as long as I know you, every time we get you on air, I've done any kind of production or anything, uh, you know, on air with you. It was always, uh, what are we going by? You know, and it was like, uh, you know, and the, you've got reason. You've got reasons for both, for both. So it's, uh, you know, it's. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, I, my mom, my mom and dad, my mom and dad call me Katie. They they prefer Katie, but but in the short around the house when I'm back, it's Kate. So you know, I don't know. I'll go by there. It's yeah. fine, Catherine. Sometimes just never Kathy or Kathleen. Yeah. Not when you're Kathy in trouble, Kathleen. Kathleen. Yeah, when you're in so trouble, what? it's Catherine. <laughs> when you're in trouble, for sure. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. How are you guys? Uh, doing you're well. Awesome. Yeah. I'm awesome. I don't know about you, but it's a good day because the sun is shining and there's no snow here in Canada, so. Yeah, yeah. It's... So there's that. Yeah. Well, you're a Midwest girl. You're used to the snow, Katie. No, you know what? I, I will for 110% claim Midwest girl. What, what's that? You're breaking up, Katie. I don't know what's going on here. So, um, I'm, I'll move around the house a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. You're the, no, you're, I'm a mid- You're good there. I'm a mid. Okay. I'll just, I'll just going to stand for the next couple minutes <laughs> in the corner here. <laughs> just on um, one leg, stand in the air. Yeah. Rub it down. <laughs> Tree, tree pose, all the tree pose. No, um, no, I, I am a Midwest girl. I will for, all, I will always play Midwest, but my body temperatures, I'm telling you what, I don't handle the cold weather like I used to. I don't know. I, when I moved to California, it was like all, all things are out. I mean, Jim, you get the warm weather, and it's like going into the cold weather after that. It's like you can't really, it's hard. It's Amen. just for a weekend. But it's, yeah. Amen. Yeah, you get it? Yeah. You have no idea. And like, I've lived in Canada and in Winter Pig, so – one of the coldest regions in Canada all my life, and still, like, I get depressed, miserable, I hate it, yes. my boss, I'm, you know, breaking all the bones that I have over over the years, like, my body can't physically handle the cold anymore, like, my hands cramp it up, my knees, so my back, like, it's uh-huh. I don't know why I still live here. <laughs> Isn't it weird? It's so bizarre. Anyways, I, I am a firm believer that body temperatures can move and, and they, whatever. Anyways, oh. <laughs> I am. I'm a firm believer in it. Yeah. So how's everything been with you? I know uh, you and I, I'm, I don't know, we, we go in spurts where we talk all the time and then we don't uh, catch up for a while. And I mean, I still, you know, <laughs> you and I, uh, you're, you're one of those people, you and I get together and, you know, we talk for hours and then we don't talk for, you know, six months to a year. But I'm trying to think, I think it may have, might have been the GRC Awards Banquet a year ago or something in Vegas at, at SEMA or something. But uh, things, yeah. have, uh, things have really uh, kind of taken off for you. Obviously, this uh, new deal with Power Nation, uh, definitely uh, big news for you. Yeah, you know, the Power Nation deal is so big. And it's more, it's, and you know what it is? It's, it's really good people who are all really interested in the same thing. And that's a really helpful thing. Um, and they're, they're just, there's a lot of, they're, um, they, they love cars, they love motorsports, they love uh, classic everything. Um, and they're just, it's a really great family to be part of. And for those of you who may not know, Power Nation is an automotive build show on Spike, NBC Sports, and CBS Sports. But yeah, it's, it's really a great combination of, of all things. It's no drama. And, um, and for, for us in this industry, it's great because um, it's, it's the same family. I see them once a month for a week. We shoot, a, we shoot a bunch of episodes all within a week in Nashville. And it's nice to have a little bit of a family that you can always count on, that you know that you'll always see at least once a month. And a lot of times in the TV industry, on my end, it's like, you know, you never know who this shooter is going to be or you never know who your production people are going to be. And it's really nice to have some consistency in the same kind of people over and over and over. Plus, the show is really great. Yeah. Uh, def- you're into that. Yeah, it definitely makes for better TV. You get to know everybody around you, and uh, when it's a revolving door, it, it makes it it definitely makes it tough. You know, you get a feel for people, and it's the same thing with yeah, doing possible. doing radio or on air talent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You you work with somebody for so long, you guys, you know, you get to feel each other out, and and you know, know what's going to happen next. And uh, yeah, that's uh, definitely definitely cool. I know uh, I've been you know keeping track. You guys have had some fun builds and stuff. You guys Uh-oh, have been working I'm, on. I'm hearing a little bit of funky static here. 
Yeah, I said. Uh, Anybody's there? Yeah, no, I'm I'm here. There's something <laughs> weird. It's uh, yeah, we got a problem with the phone line today. Like going out uh, to uh, to the internet, everything's crystal clear, but it's the phone line go- going out to you guys. Like you're crystal clear, but I can't hear you guys. You there? Hmm. I'm here, but I can't hear you. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Can you can you hear each other? I can hear you. You're you're kind of you're kind of going in and out a little bit for me, but I I'm um I don't I'm, we'll make it work. I hopefully we can hold the spot. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, you guys are crystal clear coming in here. So, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we just keep rolling with it because I know going out, uh, everything's clear. It's just uh, just the phone line coming in for some reason is kind of wonky today. No problem. We'll just we'll make it work. I like Amy's. Let's, let's, let's make it work. We got this. Yeah, we got this. So, so on on the on the flip side, Amy, I saw something that you also have your your digital um, YouTube too that looks really cool. Yeah. And putting out some cool videos. Yeah, I started a new series. uh, It's called The Babe Cave. So it's all kind of instructional, um, how to do, and uh, like product testing tutorial videos um, out of my local shop here, The Babe Cave, right out of my backyard. (laughs) So it's it's cool. I want to do something, include a couple girls, like, you know, local girls, my friends. But, you know, it's guys like to watch chicks and know what they're doing. I mean, it's different if you throw in a dude. Is that true? Chicks. Would you agree with that? It's so true. Yeah. And especially if one knows what they're doing <laughs> and knows what they're talking about. But I've had this great pedigree. I mean, I grew up, I've been riding bikes for 24 years, but I got a factory dad. Like, my dad has been riding their bikes for 60 years. He's awesome. But, you know, I, you gain your experience and your tips and tricks through people who've been doing it the longest. And, you know, he's probably have changed about 700,000 tires you know, in, in his year. So he probably knows how to do it the best way. So I learned from my dad, and then I kind of send it out into the world. So it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, totally. it's cool, and there's a lot of beginners. I mean, most people are at, at that stage where they're roll their bikes up and go out and have fun with their friends with the campfire. They're, you know, the basic level, weekend warriors, we like to call them, but they're the ones who kind of need to know all this stuff. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, take us through some of these builds you guys are working on, Katie, because I know, uh, you know, over there at Power Nation, I mean, I've been watching and keeping track, and you've had some pretty fun guests in the studio and some pretty pretty yeah. fun projects you guys have been working on. Yeah, you know, I'm so excited about it. Uh, it it's really cool because the, the community, I thought motorsports was a small world, and it's so funny how the automotive world is kind of that same level of tightness. Everyone knows somebody in some way. They Someone gave mm-hmm. it a, a tire. Or, and I, I mean, it's funny how the park the parts side of it everyone knows somebody who's been involved but um yeah we've had some really cool builds and you know one one thing that i'm really excited about is we were starting to travel the show a little bit and um you know we went we shot at ims to preview the, the 100th running of the indy 500 and um we're really incorporating a couple of different aspects to the show now and bringing in a kind of a new energy and some of the builds you know we've done a really cool bronco we've done some off-road um, if, in case you're not familiar, it's uh, four build shows that is extreme off road, Detroit Muscle, mm-hmm. Engine Power, and um, and which one did I not say? Truck Check. And so each of them kind of specialize in their own. We've done some cool Mopars. We've done um, this. We just this week on the show we have a really classic Bel Air a convertible that is just stunning and it's really neat because I've always appreciated cars and I've always been around motorsport. But it's amazing how much, like, you, you can fall for cars. And I was, I was out at the Optima Ultimate, uh, search for the Ultimate Streetcar this weekend in Vegas. And, um, and that's a show that's now going to be on MAV and NBC Sports. And it's interesting that now it's, like, the love of the cars, all these street cars that are coming out, there's something so special about every kind of car. And it's, it's, been, it's, been, a fun, it's been a fun process, and it happens to these guests and shows on the show. It's, it's really been awesome. Yeah. Well, I, and you really have the opportunity to learn about the history, you know, of all these cars, too, which, which must, uh, you know, make you appreciate them even more, kind of the story behind them all. Totally. I mean, it's like, for me, I'm a storyteller, and Jim knows this from my past. Mm-hmm. Like, I would much rather, like, get the story of um, exposing X, Y, and Z, if you're going to expose a driver to what they have for breakfast or why, they, why they're feeling so good about their race setup is, is also because they had some great family time over the weekend or whatever it is. 
I love telling the stories. And to me, mm -hmm. that's one of the coolest things about Power Nation is we had like a, um, a car last week, which um, we'll be airing in the next few um, in the next few weeks. I can't talk too much about it, but it was a father son build. And, you know, the, the guys oh. literally taught his son from the ground up. He now has like a seven year old daughter in the shop and like trying, That's trying awesome. to tell those stories is what I think is so cool. And at times when we have original owners come back in where the car has been off for 30 some years, and, you know, random trailers, and there's just every car has a story, and I think that's something that I'm, I'm learning more and more about, and that's what I actually love about the show is being able to tell those stories. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I love that, and that's really what draws people in and, and hooks them and keeps them watching. I mean, yeah. I personally like the, I like the story as well. You really get emotionally attached to things like that, so. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. know, and I know that's, you know, Katie and I have always been that way. It's let's tell the story behind the story. And, uh, you know, and I know right. Amy and I are that way with the show. You know, it's, let's, let's ask the questions nobody else does because, you know, these people you get on, they, they, they get asked the same question over and over. So what can we ask that's out of the box <laughs> right. that takes us behind the scenes? But, you know, I know you for a while. I know you work with the San Diego Padres and, uh, you know, and I know you enjoyed that. But, uh, you know, I know you were really looking forward to getting back into <laughs> motorsports. It was like there was a part of you missing. And uh, you got to feel fulfilled now back, you know, on the four wheel side of things. I am so, Jim, I'm like, I remember our conversation. I remember what I was doing when we were walking around and I was walking around the neighborhood. <laughs> you and I were on the phone and um, I, I truly am so thankful to be back in motorsport and so thankful to be back with cars. And I, I don't know, it, I love covering mainstream sports and I still, I love and follow baseball and football and, and I would cover you know, I'd be a sideliner for sure again if the opportunity came about, except I would love to combine that with motorsport. I, I miss the family. I miss the, the realm of it. And um, for sure, I'm just, I'm loving, I feel so blessed. I actually was just, I was just, I was in my own little world the other day. I was just praising God for the opportunity because I just really have felt so much more fulfilled the last couple of months getting back into this world. And I'm, I'm really appreciative for it. Yeah. Well, and I know uh, we're kind of winding things down, but I got to ask you before we go, uh, I saw you were out uh, shredding some Polaris razors the other day. How are you liking that? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, it is so much fun. It's so much fun. But you know, you know what the cool thing is? We're battling out between a four-seater and a two-seater, and it's so fun because um, my because we we have access to a two-seater, and those we can just rip it around, and it, it it's a little bit looser. It's so much fun. It, it, you kind of actually feel a little bit safer than even in a four seater, even though a four seater is. Um, I I don't know. I don't know why I would say that, but it, but it's so much fun, and I have loved using ours. We go we go out to Akatia Wells, and um, we were just talking about it this morning of when we're going to go back out and how we're going to make that happen. So um, the players. I love Akatia. Awesome. Nice, nice. Oh, isn't it awesome? There's so much places to shred it's amazing i know it's awesome all right we got to wind yeah. things up here katie but uh we need to do this more regular like every couple of months I or know. something like that this we is definitely got to bring her on more regularly yeah, and this... if you ever want to jump in <laughs> co-driver with me at one of the terror cross rounds i would love to have you it'd be sweet to have all chick girl on. i'd love to Bring me up. You let me know when. We'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah. And, Jim, for sure, you know I love coming on here. Yeah, we definitely need to do it more often. And, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll shoot a group text out after this. We'll get everything dialed in. But we need to make this, like, a more of a regular thing. But, uh, uh, as always, Katie, appreciate it, uh, you know, and uh, hopefully we get to catch up, uh, you know, off air in person sometime soon. I hope so. I hope so. You guys have a good rest of the show. Thanks so much for having me on. All right. Thanks, Katie. And, Thanks, uh, sir. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 And we're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, uh, I'm going to have a stacked Dirtfish Rally Report coming right at you here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. 
Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car or home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter, up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey highlights. The hotel is waiting. And your getaway is as close as Blue Water Resort and Casino Spring Room Special starting at just $54.95. You'll be steps away from hot slot machines, table games, bingo, restaurants, lounges, the Blue Water Marina, golf, and more. Lee Greenwood hits the stage in the amphitheater Saturday, February 27th. Book your room today at BlueWaterFun.com or call 888-243-3360. Rooms starting at just $54.95. Now at Blue Water Resort and Casino in Parker, Arizona. Available Sunday through Thursday, February 1st through April 30th. Based on availability, tax and resort fees are not included. Cannot be combined with any other offers. Excludes holidays, weekends, and special events. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood coming at you, just wrapping up with R.J. Anderson, Katie Osborne. Great way to uh, kick off the show. Two of my favorite uh, guests, favorite people to have on. But right now, we're going to fast forward into a Dirtfish Rally Report brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web, www.dirtfish.com. And uh, over this weekend, we had uh, some big news um, breaking out of the Patrick Sandell camp. He is back with Brian Herta Racing in Red Bull Global Rallycross. Um Signed up with Cobalt Tools yet again, longtime sponsor of Patrick Sandell. They will be back campaigning a Ford Fiesta in Red Bull Global Rallycross. And, uh, man, the entries are rolling in for Rally America Oregon Trail Rally. Uh, still haven't hit the cap, but uh, definitely uh, some heavy hitters, some uh, celebrities coming in. It's uh, definitely going to be a good one. And over the weekend we had, we had the first round of the FIA World Rallycross Championship happening in Portugal. Petter Solberg coming away with that victory. Robin Larson second. Topi Heikinen in third. Backerud, Andreas Backerud, blue in fourth. Sebastian Loeb fifth. Johan Christofferson uh, finding himself into sixth. Ken Block having some troubles in the first round, but his teammate Andreas Backerud definitely uh, had his car dialed in. Uh, definitely looking for a rebound from Ken Block at the next round here in a couple of weeks. And uh, that was your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley Valley, and I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, 
are just hitting the trail on the weekend. For over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, and uh, man, uh, Katie Osborne, we've had R.J. Anderson, and uh, man, a whole lot more happening. And uh, don't forget, want to give one uh, last plug in for our good buddy. I don't want to say one last plug, because I'm sure we're going to plug it throughout the show, but our good friend Hubert Rowland there with Nitro Circus, having his Razor stolen over the weekend, and uh, definitely... Uh, Definitely keep your eyes out for Hubert's razor. We uh, we want to get that thing back for him, get him dialed in. And I know he is uh, he's been practicing like a madman for uh, for Terracross coming up uh, starting this summer. So I don't know. I'm so Me- jealous. Yeah, I, I need to practice for Terracross. <laughs> I, I think we all need to practice for Terracross. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's you do de- definitely need some practice there, Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll. Uh, I didn't roll it the last uh, couple rounds. Last one I did in Charlotte, I, I think I finished six. So uh, we, you know, def- definitely made some I, improvements. In the summertime, I have nothing on my mind but two wheels. Like. I know Terracross is, you know, Terracross is at the end of the season, so right now my main focus is two wheels, two wheels. Right after this show, as soon as I hang up the phone, I am jumping in my truck, and I'm going to pick up my brand new Yamaha R3 street bike. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Like, it's like Christmas today. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm jealous, man, going out uh, shredding a street bike. I know you were in a Polaris slingshot over the weekend, too. You're just uh, killing it with, uh, with the pavement pounders lately. Yeah, well, yesterday also I went for a rip in the in the slingshot. We like to go for ice cream with it, but it's pretty funny because we rolled into this little ice cream parlor, and all the girls who worked inside were freaking out, coming outside, taking Snapchats, pictures, videos with it. Like, they couldn't believe how sexy this thing is. Every time we're driving down the road, like, people are hanging out the windows with their phones, snapping photos of the slingshot. It's so cool. It's one of my favorite things ever. Like, I would swap my everyday vehicle and drive that thing every day. I love it. It's super fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because, you know, I've got this Subaru I'm driving around, uh, you know, this beautiful Hyper Blue Subaru WRX STI. It's and, a uh, nice color. I love the color of it. Yeah, and uh, I pulled in uh, – um, trying not to eat fast food, but I pulled in to get a diet Dr. Pepper at uh, one of the local uh, fast food places the other day. And this girl that was working the window, she's a high school girl. She came up and literally her mouth was like, she's like, rev the engine, rev the engine. I want to hear the blow off valve. And I'm like, holy crap, this girl knows her turbos. But it was, uh, it was kind of funny. Like all the employees are looking at her and she was like, literally like trying to get me to rev it up in the drive through and everything else. And it was, it was comedic. I guess her boyfriend's a Subaru fan and has a Subaru too, but, uh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of interesting. So you know, I'm in the drive through getting a diet soda and uh, you know revving up the engine of uh, of this WRX. But uh, I guess it was one of those things had to be there, right? But uh, yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna take a short break. We come back. Joe Duncan from Terracross gonna be on the line here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us 
take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. A 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. It's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. We got uh, Joe Duncan from Terracross on the line in our weekly Terracross segment. And uh, I got to say, Joe, I know uh, Amy and I have uh, I've been beating the horse pretty hard, but it's not dead yet. We're going to continue to beat it all uh, all show long. But uh, our good friend Hubert, man, uh, somebody, uh, somebody decided they thought they needed a razor a uh, little more than he did, and definitely, uh, definitely not a good thing. Yeah, what a what a terrible situation for our buddy Hubert. You know, you, you just you just think the good of everybody, and then for that to happen, and uh, you know, truck, trailer, razor, not a cheap endeavor. Um, you know, the great thing is, is look at look at the support he's getting from the you know obviously the Terracross community, the UTV side by side community. I mean, they they've located. It twice now, or have seen, someone has seen it and and sent him information. So the more people we get involved, the more people talking about it, and uh, the more we can uh, we can keep these uh, machines from disappearing. Yeah, I agree. You know, there comes a point where you got a window of opportunity, and then after that, it's you know it's gone. You know, and things are stripped, and uh, you know, and it seems like that window of opportunity is still open right now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get it located. But uh, speaking of Hubert, I know uh, one thing we haven't really talked about as far as uh, Terracross goes is uh, you know I know Hubert's involved with you in uh, you know in this new division that uh, I'm going to be racing in, and Jason Ellis and Hubert and uh, a few others. But uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the divisions we've got in Terracross this year, uh, you know, once uh, once a series hits, because I know in the past it's been basically a men's and a women's division, but this year Terracross expanding and bringing in some other divisions. Yeah, so uh, really cool things happening and expanding with Terracross. You know, we've had the, the great men's division that we've been running for, you know, the past three years now, and, and we have the, you know, one of, one of my favorite classes, the women division, and of course, uh, Jim, you've single-handedly helped us fill that uh that <laughs> women's class and then uh and then our hero military class you know powered uh you know paul thacker kind of helps us head that uh program up and and that's been an amazing class so those three classes have uh have kind of been uh the staple last year and and our building program so this year um we've kind of stepped it up a notch and with the amazing support of polaris and the razors and their ever-growing uh onslaught of uh side by side we have the, we're introducing the turbo class this year, the Polaris Razor Turbo 1000 class. And basically we've taken the top five in our men's class for points and have jumped into that, uh, that top class there. So you got RJ Anderson, you got Mickey Thomas, you got, 
um, Cody Raiders, you got Cole Katu, and um, and then a couple others are looking at it. Of course, you guys uh, both know Ronnie Renner really well, and that's the that's the class. Uh, if everything goes as planned right now, he'll be running in that class, and looks like his schedule's opening up this year, and he'll be able to race our full series, and he'll be racing in the Turbo class. And then we got some uh, some pretty big name um, uh, action sports stars and racers that are uh, that are going to come and go from the series depending on their schedule. And there's a few spots for those guys to come in and and race the Turbo class. So there'll be uh, you know nine, ten in the Turbo class. Then we'll have our men's class. Um, so we'll, we've broken that down from the 27 to 30 that we were that we were experiencing and uh, we're going to have that at a maximum of, of 20 drivers in that men's class. And then we have, of course, the uh, amazing women's class. We'll have 10 in there. And actually we have, that class is pretty much full. We have, I think 13 women uh, right now trying to get their sponsors and partners in an order uh, for 10 spots. And we'll only, we'll only be able to take 10 women in that class. That's kind of on a, uh, first come, first serve. Of course, Amy and Sarah Price and Jamie Ward and and uh, you know the staples in the series, Katie Vernola, Shelby Anderson. We just got such a great women's field in there. And then and then the celebr- the um, Celebrity X class is going to be uh, going to be another new one like the Turbo class. And this class is uh, up to ten athletes. They all uh, all get the uh, uh, get their uh, practice in, their seating in, uh, a qualifying setup, and then they'll run a, a final of 10 drivers. And, of course, yourself, you know, we, we, we've made it for the people that draw media attention, the guys that can that can really get the exposure for that class. And you got uh, Hubert Rowland. Um, basically, it's going to be uh, every, everyone's favorite redneck class. He's going to help invite athletes. He's got a... He's got a list of about 15 to 20 people that he's working on. They're going to come and uh, come and go. We got guys like yourself and Jason Ellis and and Hubert and a couple others that are going to, you know, that are going to race every race for the points championship. And then we're going to have four or five spots that that people are going to be uh, invited and some social media um, programs that go along with it, and they get to come and play with us at our at our Terra Cross event. And then, um, of course, we have our our uh, hero military adaptive class, which is you know a huge one for me and and a lot of people involved with Terracross. You know, supporting our troops, supporting our PTSD soldiers, supporting our wounded soldiers, and and you know most importantly, giving giving an outlet, showing what what a adaptive athlete can do. There's nothing holding these people back, whether they're injured, whether there's, you know, trauma, whatever it is, there's nothing holding them back. And, uh, we have Terracross to give, uh, to give them an outlet for that. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, talking about adaptive and stuff like that, I was just, uh, you know, I know all of us are are good friends with Paul Thacker and, uh, I got to tell you, have you been watching his Instagram feed? He is absolutely killing it on his snowmobile lately. He was hitting some, some kickers on that snowmobile. I'm like, holy crap, Paul is flat. Just, I mean, laying it down. Well, you know what? Nothing, uh, nothing holds that guy back. And, uh, from, from a few weeks after his, his unfortunate accident. Um, he was right back. He was actually he was actually in helping others um, cope with their their situations at the Craig Hospital in in Denver. And from there, he just uh, kept that positive attitude and spun it right around. You know, taking a, a, a silver medal at the X Games this year. I mean, his goal since I met that guy has been to get a medal at the X Games and. Uh, you know, with some unfortunate luck over the years, um, you know, he's never able to do that. And this year he did it. And I still think, uh, I still think every day he posts something about that medal, which is, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, he teamed up with the boys up in Washington, Joe Parsons and, uh, Corey Davis and, um, a few others up there. And, uh, he went and hit the foam pit, which is one of the things him and I have been talking about for a long time is, he wants to get back upside down and 
uh, sure, sure shit. He got out there and he uh, he did it, and he had a blast. And thanks to those guys uh, in Monster Energy for making that happen and and getting him back. And then and then he jumps back in the Monster Motorhome and heads the, back home to Alaska. Jumps on his uh, Polaris axis and um, axis arm A, and he goes and hits the big mountains and. And like you said, he's going big and having fun, and you know, nothing more than being on a sled. Um, you know, a little bit, you know, tear across and his razor, and and being out on the course and and being with the uh, hero military class. But you get Paul Factor on a sled, and he knows how to have a good time, and he doesn't he doesn't go small. That's for sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, we got to wrap things up here, Joe, but I uh, appreciate the time, buddy. We'll definitely uh, do it again next week. And uh, we are going to be back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. After this break, we've got uh, Jeff Alessi, Supercross Racer, calling in. Later on in the show, we got Brett Q on the line. All that and more still to come. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley Valley, and I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey Highlights. MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car or home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, joined on the line by Supercross Racer Jeff Alessi. How's everything going, Jeff? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, you guys hear me? welcome. Yeah, we can uh, we can hear you, man. Everything is clear. The phone line may be a little bit scratchy, but uh, everything going out uh, the, to the airwaves is crystal clear. So I don't know. We got a little problem with a with a phone line internally, but uh, everything is good to go. If you can hear me. Yeah, it's no problem. I can hear you just fine. All right, man. How are you guys doing? Doing You're awesome. Yeah, doing uh, doing well, man. Just uh, another uh, another week, another radio show. But uh, 
um, you know, definitely, uh, definitely, you know, Amy, you know, reached out to me and said, hey, we got to get Jeff on the line. I said, absolutely, man. You know, it's great to see you back on a bike and uh, out hitting some Supercross events. Yeah, you know, it's been a, uh, it's been a pretty good season so far. I, um, I didn't come in with, uh, you know, the years of, uh, of being ready like all these other guys have, but, uh, you know, someone coming back in for four years, not racing Supercross and making my first main, uh, third round in pretty good. Um, definitely trying to get more consistency. Uh, I've made three of the last four rounds, uh, the main events and, Actually, the last two rounds, uh, well, last weekend, um, the day race in St. Louis, I made the main event out of semi, which was cool, you know, with a, I even had a, an extra position to spare. Um, the weekend before that, I was running fifth in the semi and uh, made a mistake on the, the last lap, with uh, half a lap to go, and definitely was kicking myself because I gave up the transfer spot um, out of that semi, but was able to go back to the LCQ and make it out of that, so... Uh, uh, I'm really happy with the way I'm riding. I'm really happy with the way uh, the team is around me, the way they formed um, to get me, uh, you know, happy with the bike and comfortable. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with uh, with everything this year so far. So, um, hope, yeah, I mean, hope everyone that's watching, uh, the haters and the lovers, you know, they, uh, <laughs> they, they know that I'm out there pushing and trying my hardest. So, um, I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the fans, doing it for uh, – for the my fans and uh, I'm even doing it for for the haters, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I mean, we were kind of debating on talking about this, but you know, I know you and your family personally, and I know you guys get a bad rap. And quite frankly, I I don't think it should be that way. And it's funny because I want to tell the story of how I kind of came to meet you guys and why I think so highly of your family. But I remember I was 12 years old. I was at a big national at Millville. And I was on the line, this scared little girl, and this is kind of when you guys were in your prime, you know, your amateur years, there's so much hype around the Alessi boys, and um, you guys actually came to the line, pulled my bike off the starting line, and packed my gate for me. And you and your dad and your brother cheered me on, and dude, I was like a fan from the start. Like, you guys are so nice, so grateful, such a good family, um, really, really good people. I mean, you guys are very welcoming and talk to everybody, and such a Again, good people, and it's funny that you guys get a bad rap, but I have to commend you on how well you deal with the bullshit. Honestly, you, you know, you're very humble, very gracious, and I, I just have to say, you know, it, controversy is all part of racing and all part of professional athletes, but you, you handle it very well, and I'm really happy to see you back after, you know, a four-year hiatus is a long time, and to be making 450 names, I mean, that is good. I mean, you obviously are very well rounded athlete but uh you know how has been you know handling the controversy and coming back like why did you decide to come back after four years well i mean it's a it's a normal thing to uh to go to the races and have the the few hecklers but you know it's been pretty easy for me going to the races a lot of people um you know i have have them coming up to me and, and telling me that i'm doing good i have some people you know, I see, you know, regularly that, uh, that try to help me out and tell me, you know, how to, to continue doing better. I, um, I still have, you know, I obviously have a, a really, 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 um, uh, I guess you could say hardworking brother, you know, he, um, mm-hmm. he's always set the bar for me family. pretty high. So your whole family, um, your brother, your dad, yourself. Say that again. You have a whole hardworking family, like your brother, Yourself, your dad, you guys are like a family unit that busts your butts every weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's something to live up to, you know, holding, uh, you know, having that Alessi on your back. It's, uh, you know, I get text messages from my dad if I say something or, you know, if something happens on the weekend. It's always, you know, I guess I got to hold, um, hold my actions higher than what a lot of people have to because of, uh, you know, that added attention, especially since... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm coming off of, uh, you know, all the drama that happened in 2013. And I, I know that there are uh, a lot of people that are sitting there watching to see how I'm doing, see uh, just how my weekends are going, seeing how I'm, um, you know, acting, how, uh, you know, just my program is, is definitely yeah. um, in, in the limelight right now. You know, it's uh, it's nice. You know, you got to take the good with the bad and, 
I, I, I really enjoy it. And like you said, you know, anytime we, we are at the track and we see something that, you know, might help somebody or, you know, we're not, we're, we're not one of those riders, me or my brother, we're not one of those riders that, uh, you know, just keep walking and mind our own business. You know, we, yeah. we tend to, to get into other people's business, whether it's, uh, to help them or to, you know, if they're, if they're talking, talking smack, you know, we're not scared to go up and ask them what the problem is. Uh, I don't think that we deserve it as much as we've gotten, but obviously, no, not at all. um, it's definitely one of those things where we've been we've been doing it for so long, and people expect a lot of us, and some people want to see us fail, and that's just the way it is in the sport. I'm sure that there's other riders and other athletes and other sports that have to deal with it. So we're not we're not the only ones. So we uh, we exactly. remember that. And exactly. We, uh, we think about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and- exactly. And I mean, you can either let it affect you one of two ways. You can you know let it you know, be a negative influence on your life and pack up and go home and never, you know, show your face again. But I mean, you guys just stuck her through it and it's, it's like no big deal. And you guys are back, you know, every weekend and you can let it be the fire under your butt to perform better than you ever have to kind of prove all these quote unquote haters wrong. And that's exactly what you're doing. And, you know, I've been following social media and following Instagram and, and Facebook and you've got a lot of people on your side who, you know, kind of, you know, are at your defense and applauding you every weekend for showing up and, and kicking butt. And I, uh, I think you're doing, you know, a heck of a job. But uh, I have to say, I have to ask you, um, are you going to be following in your brother's footsteps and making, you know, your appearance at the Canadian Outdoor Nationals? Because I'd like to see you right here. Well, in 2014, I uh, I made my way up for Deschambeau and the final mm-hmm. four races. Um it went all right, you know. The first race definitely was the best. I uh, I came back for the last three races um, to tracks that were really physically demanding um, and mm-hmm. didn't uh, didn't perform up to the, the level that I thought I could do. Uh, however, like I said, the first race went really well and gave me a really good taste of how Canada is. I really like the people. Um, the racers are really good. There's a lot. There's a lot of kids and a lot of riders coming up that are coming from Canada that are, are really good, the Pettis. Um, and then, you know, there's the racers up there that know their tracks, know their program, and they'd be good. So they make it a little tougher for the, uh, for the Americans making that transition up to uh, the Great White North. Uh, <laughs> but I loved it up there. I had, I had a really good time. As of right now, I really don't have any offers to go up there. Um, I'd, lo- I'd like to go up there. Uh, I think that Maybe my fitness would be kind of questionable for those those really uh, physical tracks because mm-hmm. I remember them last year. Uh, I think it might have been I don't know if it was Walton that was the sand track with the hills. Um, oh, Gopher Dune. Maybe Gopher Dune is one of our. Uh, no, tracks. I don't think it was Gopher. It was uh, it really had big Sandy. rocks, really big hills, kind of sandy. Had a hard spot. Uh, my brother pretty much lost the championship there last year when it was or in 2014 when he hit a rebar and um but yeah like you know, that won't. track <laughs> yeah it might be one <laughs> but yeah that track uh when i think of going to back up to canada that that track um really makes me think about you know i have to be fit and kind of be ready and you know it's it's not like supercross where you can go out there and just flow and uh mm-hmm. you know pick apart the track you know like a you know like a surgeon you know and, and Canada on those tracks, you just have to be gritty and, and strong, and you got to be willing to kind of hang your nuts out on the edge of your sleeve. And um, I, I mean that that kind of makes me a little nervous. I'll be honest about it. But I mean, not not every track was that uh, that tough. Uh, most of the tracks were really fun, um, including that track. Uh, I think it was Walton, is what we're saying it is um, mm-hmm. Overton. I don't know which one it was, uh, but. That track specifically makes me know that if I'm going to Canada, I got to be extremely safe and ready to go. And and uh, we'll see if if something comes up where I can get that that time and that practice and to uh, be prepared for it. I know that my teammate Cade um, is going up there, and then uh, my brother and Vince obviously um, will be making their way up there for the Kawasaki team. Uh, yeah. I wish them the best of luck. You know, I really would like to see my brother win win the championship up there and and take that confidence and bring it back down here for next year's Supercross season. Uh, I think he deserves it. He works 
Yeah, you know, that's the thing about my brother is from day one he's always worked the hardest he can and um well through the last few years obviously he's uh he, we've had a lot more competition come into the four fifty class and he still tries his hardest when he can uh when he's surrounded by guys that are, you know, champions like James Stewart and he you see he doesn't bow down, he uh he just pushes really hard and that motivates me to uh to try and get myself somewhere where I can race and continue building because, I mean, if you think about this Supercross season for myself, I, um, like I said, I've been racing Supercross for four years and I was nervous. Like I went to mm -hmm. uh, Germany, like I, 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 my whole summer, I didn't ride, didn't train, just was basically in Ohio, um, you know, fishing. And then and my dad's <laughs> like, hey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> my dad says, you know, we're getting close here. You know, it's uh, coming up on October. You know, you want to get over here to California and start training and get ready for uh, for Germany. I'm like, man, I haven't been riding at all. I mean, my bike is is toasted. Uh, so we ended up selling that bike, put me on one of Mike's race bikes that he wasn't racing because he was switching over to Honda. And, um, got a little practice in, went to Germany, and I'm telling you, being in Germany was the most stressful time of my life. I uh, I wasn't really ready. I showed up to the first race, and if anyone knows anything about the German, Germany series, it's a little bit different than how we run the 450 program here, but kind of similar. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of like going to heat race, and if you race a heat race over here, uh, and you don't qualify out of the heat race, you're just automatically put to the semi. Well, over there, you actually have to qualify out of your heat race to make it to the semi. If you don't make it out of the heat race, you have to go to the LCQ. And if you make it out of the LCQ, now you get to race your semi. And then, obviously, you go to your semi, you make it out of your semi, you go to the main event. If you don't make it out of the semi, you go to the LCQ for the semi, and then you make it to the main event. Well, I, <clears throat> in my first four races over there, didn't make it out of either the heat race or the LCQ to make it to the semi. It was absolutely, I was so, I was so rusty, you know, um, I had mm -hmm. a really old bike. I think that that was a little bit of the problem. Obviously I, uh, a lot of those guys over there were on updated 2016s and they all had really good stuff. Uh, and I was on a little bit older of a bike. I was on a 2012 that my brother had raced, uh, five years ago over there, but you know, it, it took me a few races and it was kind of crazy because, uh, on my fifth and sixth night of racing over there, I was able to make it to the main event and get sixth the first night, and then I was able to progress the next night to get third nice. in the main event. So um, I see a lot of progression with me. Uh, I'm not one of those riders that goes out there and just it stays the same speed. And I think that mm -hmm. my, I think that my, the, the way that I'm progressing, the speed that I'm getting back and how fast I'm getting it back, I feel like maybe it might take me, you know, till next Supercross season or the one after that for me to uh, to get to where I really want to be. But um, if I can ride the way I'm riding in practice on my fast lap or how I've been riding in the semis um, the last two weekends, I feel like if I could ride that speed in the main event, I could be a top 12, top 12 guy. Yeah. Um, but... The tracks are so, like, even in Supercross, the last few weekends, they've been so physical that just just follow, uh, getting the laps done have been pretty pretty tough. Um, this last weekend, I was able to get 17 laps done, and uh, that just shows you, like, how how much faster guys like Dungeo and they're able to lap each times. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. But like I said, going back to where I'm coming from, I haven't been racing for four years, and uh uh, I haven't been racing in the short amount of time that you've been back, you've really been able to put it all together, yeah. though, and, and show us, you know, what Jeff Lessie is made of and give it a little bit more time, and then you'll, you'll, you'll have it dialed, and that's, that's what's exciting about it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, we yeah, got I'm, I'm to wrap I'm this excited. up, Jeff. Hey, we got we to gotta cut to a commercial break, buddy. Um, but we'll definitely, uh, uh, definitely appreciate the time uh, having you on, uh, on the show. And uh, we will we uh, bring you back on after. Yeah, we definitely got to bring you back on, uh, you know, here in uh, the next couple of weeks and, uh, you know, and do this again. But uh, we got to wrap things up here. Uh, go to a commercial break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Just wrapping things up with Jeff Alessi, Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. We got Brett Q on the line. I know, uh, Brett, you've been having a little fun out at uh, out of Pastrana land, my friend. Man, I always have fun. I don't, I don't care where I'm at. It's, uh, it's good. So, it's been having a blast, and uh, just got back to Oklahoma this uh, yesterday, I believe. So, it's been a week out there, and yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it uh, looked like, man, you guys were uh, were throwing down out there. <laughs> yeah. Breaking yeah, bikes, throwing me. down, doing front flips, smashing <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, I got there at like uh, 5 o'clock last Sunday, and Travis was like, hey, I got to go to a family dinner, but before I get back tomorrow, you got to learn how to do a front flip and a back flip. Foam pit, airbag, 75 feet, go. And I'm like, for real right now? I've never done either one of those things. I don't want to do that. And, uh, yeah, he gave me the five-minute how-to, and, did it so yeah it's, it's what it sounds like man anytime uh anytime you go out to pastrana land uh you've got no choice i think they just push you to your limits and uh you mm-hmm. know and that's just the way it is like if you if you're going to be there they're going to push you and i think that's um just uh, from everything i've uh i've heard that's just the way it is man they they like getting you out of your comfort zone yeah i mean it's good because he won't tell you you can do something unless he really believes you can do it, though. Like, people think exactly. that he just throws everybody in these situations that he's, uh, that he is just trying to get you hurt or whatever, but it's, it's not the case. He's, uh, he's a really smart, really calculated guy, and he, he trusts in my abilities apparently more than I do. So, it was, uh, <laughs> it was awesome, though. It was so much fun. It was an experience of a lifetime. Yeah. Well, I gotta gotta ask, man. I know, uh, I, I saw a post, uh, you, you threw up on Instagram a while back. How is it to uh, to finally know uh, you're heading to X Games? Oh man, I'm I'm pumped. It's been a long road for sure. It's been four years that I've been trying to get in, and it's it, nowadays it's like it's not even so much that like X Games is six minutes long. You know, it really doesn't even matter that much. But it's the whole fact that I did what I set out to do in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, just using that tool got me a lot more than X Games ever could or would. Um, I I don't want to. I'm not bashing X games or anything like that, but um, it just, it was a huge tool for me to, uh, to take the next step in my career, I guess. So if I, if it wouldn't have been for them and for the name X games and for honestly, for not getting invited, I probably wouldn't be where I am. So it's uh, everything happens for a reason. And I'm, I can't, uh, can't complain a bit about it. Yeah, it's uh, definitely, I mean, you know, that, that's one thing I've always said, you know, and, and there's, you know, there's only been a few disciplines I could ever even compete in, you know, on the four wheel side of things. And, uh, you know, I've never got an invite yet, but I know there's a lot of politics involved behind the scenes on who gets invites, who doesn't, you know, but I think, uh, like you said, I mean, regardless of whether you take home a medal or not, it's kind of like the Olympics. It's cool to say, Hey, I was an X games athlete. Yeah, exactly. For sure. I mean, last year I got to be an alternate and that was super cool, but this year to know that I'm in, it's uh, it's pretty special. So I'm uh, I'm pumped. What goes into X Games sure. Big Whip rep? That's what I want to know. Like, what what? How do you prepare for you know Big Whip and X Games? Uh, I mean, just riding. Honestly, like I feel like the, the more comfortable I am, the more riding time I get, the better I'm going to do. So, um, I, I don't know. That's that's a good question. I just bought a ramp. Finally, I've never had a ramp before. Of my own. I've kind of that's good. Just hit one every. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pumped. So I've only got to hit a ramp like probably once every couple months before that, but it's uh it's awesome to have my own now. So it should help out a lot. 
Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I got to say, Amy and I, we talked about getting you on air for a while, you know, and it's uh, I, I got a lot of respect for, for you and the way you do things. I mean, it, it seems like, you know, in this day and age, you know, there's a lot of guys that, uh, you know, that race and, and compete and things like that. But, uh, you know, it, it seems like now, you know, more than ever, I mean, sponsors and things like that, I mean, to make it in, uh, you know, this industry, whether it's two wheels or four wheels, you got to bring something else to the table. You know, being a racer just mm-hmm. isn't enough anymore, you know, and here mm-hmm. I am, I do radio, I do TV, I do media work, and then I race trophy trucks and razors and, and everything else. I mean, you know, Amy does media work. She's got a YouTube channel. She does all this in, in addition to racing motocross. And, you know, I look at your following and so social media and stuff like that. And and you're one of those guys that falls in those lines. It's, you know, it's like, you know, I've got to do something else to, to be able to do what I love, you know, and, and uh, you've been really successful at it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I mean, like you said, you, if you're not fast enough to be a pro racer or to, to be where you want to be in the sport, you have to figure something else out. And I mean, if you're, if you are the fastest guy, it doesn't matter if anybody likes you to be honest, but if you are not, you, you have to, just show your personality and, and uh, be marketable. So that's kind of the road I've taken. And I've, I've never been that fast, honestly. Like, I've always been pretty slow, to be be real. But it's uh, it's good. I mean, it's I've found my thing. And I'm I'm not the best at whipping a dirt bike. I'm, not, I'm probably not the best at anything, honestly. But I have fun at it. So I just uh, I think it's cool that people want to watch that and want to follow that. But um, Dayton doing the videos that he's done has been huge for me as well. Without him, um, nobody would – Nobody would even know who I am, you know? Um, he's so and, you know, that, that's up. what I like about you is you, you really, you know, attract that general population of motocross riders are those weekend warriors and the people who just do it for fun. Majority of people who own a dirt bike do it because they just love riding with their friends or hitting jumps, going in the bush or, you know, the camp, <laughs> whatever. And, um, you know, people like yourself and your following really attract that and show people how much fun they can have on a dirt bike. And, you know, you're doing it right because you're really creating longevity for yourself. Um, you know, owning the fact that you're not the fastest do it on a bike. And I'm in a similar way. Like I've never won a national championship. Um, I can still hang with the boys and I'll hold my own when I want to, but you know, I'm not really in it to, to win any big titles. I just want to have fun on my dirt bike and really show other people how much fun they can have too. And, uh, you know, you're, you are doing it right, and you got social media down, and you're creating a, a great brand for yourself. And you know, oh, I, I know that. your tagline, the most famous dirt bike rider with zero career accomplishments, but man, you got your, <laughs> your gear line, ride through six five, you got into X Games, Big Whip, like, you're, you're slowly lining up a huge number of accomplishments for yourself, so you don't take that away from yourself at all. Yeah, well, I mean, I kind of told myself I can't win X Games because then I'll have to change my Instagram and then nobody will follow me and then <laughs> I won't have any friends. And it will just be over with from there. So I got to go out and kind of take it easy. You can't be going too crazy out there. But <laughs> it'll be good. That's yeah. awesome. uh, you, you can only get you know, a silver, max a silver. You can't get a gold, right? You're like, ah, I can't yeah, get a gold. Yeah. It's going to ruin everything. <laughs> Yep, exactly. I'm going to turn around and look at the voting board up there as I go by, and, oh, man, I better start doing some uh, one-footers or something. I don't, I don't need no votes. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, I think I've heard it all now. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, like you said, you got to relate to the to the everyday person. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I try my best to, to go to all the local tracks around and just anywhere I'm at, I don't – I try not to make myself, like, untouchable. Like, I feel like you look at somebody like Stuart and you just – you don't ever see him. You're not, not saying anything bad about him, but it's like you, he's somebody that's like, I've never even really seen the guy walk by me, you know? And I've been, yeah. in race. it's just like, you don't see him. He goes from his motor home straight to his bike, to the track, and then he's gone. And you would never catch him at a local track or anywhere else. Like, I don't want to make myself that guy. I want to be somebody that people can relate to. And, and I want to go out and ride with the, the 85 class in the local practice just to make their day, you know. Um, it's just, it's fun to me. That just puts a bigger smile on my face than anything. It's not, it's not where you go or, or what, where you get to ride or how good you do at X Games. It's, it's about the people you get to do it with. So I think that's cool. Yeah. I think that's the best part. I of love that. That's exactly the same reason I do my thing and, you know, why I People ask me why I don't hit up the Canadian Nationals and why I hit up all these local little races. Like, I get more enjoyment out of, you know, riding with my friends and riding with new little kids and people and just, you know, kind of doing it for everybody else. Like, you got to be, you got to take yourself out of this and kind of, you know, give back to the sport that you love. And 
again, like I said, you're, I think you're really doing it right. But funny story, I got to tell people um, just kind of how I how I came to know who Brett Q was. Um, I was in Daytona filming a Ricky Bobby quote um, video for Motorcycle Superstore, and I was going through all my footage, and I had this guy literally like, just wearing more normal clothes, like no race gear, like jumping in every clip. Like I had about 20 clips of him jumping into the camera saying a Ricky Bobby quote, and I really had no idea who it was. And I was putting my video together, and someone was like, man, that's Brett Q. Like, he knows all the Ricky Bobby lines. And it was really funny because I wasn't too sure who you were with, uh, without your helmet on. But I just remember, Daytona, you jumped into, like, every single clip you could get to throw out a Ricky Bobby quote. And I thought it was awesome. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I, I know you don't remember this, apparently, but I actually met you before that. I don't remember when it was or where it was. It might have been Millville, but it was at a race somewhere. I met you, oh, and I don't remember no. much about it. But I do remember meeting you there. Um, I I think you were with Jimmy and Greg or something. Um, but, yeah, I met you before that. It was just a long time ago. Oh, I think I remember right. that. I think we have a photo of you, me, Jimmy Albertson, and Greg Albertson all together at Millville. Pretty sure. There's a chance. There's a very good chance. Man, but so that's pretty funny. Back. Dirt bike kid. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's right. So what's right. next on the program for you, man? What's what's going on for the rest of the season for you so far? I know you're trying to make a, a trip up to Winnipeg here to come and uh, <laughs> hang out with me and ride in my local town and take you to some of our cool tracks, but what else you got going on? Man, it sounds like whenever I come up there, I'm going to have to find a time when it's not completely a mud fest like you rode in the other day because I like oh, to keep my gear no, no. good. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> like a, a preppy freestyle guy now, you know? Like, I don't like to get dirty, so... Don't worry, I can handle it. We, we can take you to a nice, like, you know, cement pad track with a ramp if you'd like. Yeah. Princess. Yeah, I'd rather put on a new tire than, than uh, have to fill in my gear. So, other than that, I'm uh, doing X Games, obviously, and then I really don't know um, a lot of other events that are coming up, but I'm sure Monster Cup will happen again for Best Whip. But mainly my focus right now is working on getting Ride365.com set up. Um, we've been working on that, and it's, it's kind of like uh, just an online um online store that's kind of the same thing as what i was doing at motorsport but it's uh it's our own thing completely separate and uh yeah we got our warehouse going up in arkansas and i've been doing a lot of stuff with that trying to, to build it up and and make it something hopefully i can fall back on one of these days so it's uh it's going good yeah always gotta have that's a awesome up, right? I, I really like your gear like the red 365 with the the big number across the jersey, like, oh, I love it. And I'm really jealous you jumped to the punch before I did because that's something I wanted to do. I kept telling Jim, like, I wanted to make my own gear with big number 71, but dang it. <laughs> oh, man. It's a really nice, sharp-looking stuff, and Kyle Peters looked really good wearing that stuff in Supercross this year. I, I just remember catching, you know, him rocking it. But, uh, yeah, it's doing good. Awesome. Got a good program going. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. Maybe I'll have to get you a set coming up soon whenever we get our uh, first shipment in. Yeah. Definitely. Sweet. For sure. I, I actually don't have any yet. I just got my first one as a sample set just the other day, so I'm blacking. I don't even get to wear my own gear. <laughs> wearing somebody else's right. stuff right now. I'll be wearing it before long. Uh-huh. I get that, man, for sure. But uh, we got to wrap things up here, buddy. Uh, but uh, I think we definitely need to get you dialed in as X Games gets closer and uh, get you on before mm-hmm. X Games, man. We'll uh, get uh, get some fan votes uh, going your way. We'll uh, We'll prime the pump for you. For sure. Perfect. I love it. I appreciate you guys. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Brett. Uh, we will definitely catch up soon, my friend. Uh, we're going to take a short break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Amy Hood and I will be back after this, wrapping things up. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. 
The 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car or home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. Since 1970, KC Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, KC Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Wrapping things up here with my partner in crime, Amy Hood. Uh, almost another Down and Dirty Radio Show in the books. I know uh, Amy's going to go slay some tires on her uh, on her new street bike. I don't know. I think <gasps> I think the. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Like I'm like getting ready right now as <laughs> as we wrap up the show here. But man, I just have so much fun every Tuesday. I don't want it to end. Like, can we just have a radio show that lasts? all day yeah. <laughs> on all of our guests have so much to talk about and they're so interesting and i just i just want to talk to them forever so it's, yeah. it's, it comes to an end after three hours yeah it sucks i mean it's like you know these people they all become your friends and you know and, and stuff like that and like you know you gotta get them into a 12 or 14 minute time slot and it's like man i could talk you know with rj or katie or, or like brett i'm sure we could have talked forever with him or even jeff you know it's <laughs> it, it's you know it's tough it definitely uh Definitely makes it makes it hard, but uh, I don't know. We'll figure something out. I don't know. We we gotta like we said. We gotta either do a podcast or a second show or something. We, we'll figure it out. I know definitely, but uh, but yeah, I'm excited. We're, I've been trying to plan for Brett to, to get up here to Winnipeg. We'll have to get him on on like a live show or something. But um, we've got really tons of nice tracks here. And we have a freestyle compound called Whiskey Throttle that uh, you know he's been wanting to come check out, so uh, it'd be pretty cool if we could get them up here hanging out, and I'm trying to convert my shop, like the upper water, into a little apartment for my moto guests when they come, so, um, yeah, if you guys want to come hang out in Whitpeg with me, come on down. Nice. <laughs> I'll take your riding. Nice. That's my apartment. You can't, you can't give the thing away yet. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry you want it. Okay. Yeah, all, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we got to... Um, Got to give a big shout out to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, Casey Highlights, Gibson Exhaust, Dirtfish Riley School, MTX, Terracross, Blue Resort and Casino, all our guests, Joe Duncan, RJ Anderson, Katie Osborne, Jeff Alessi, Brett Q. Um, got upcoming events. We got Supercross. We got some Lucas Oil Rally America, uh, Nora Mexican 1000. Don't forget uh, those Off Road Motorsports Hall of Fame nominations. Uh, give me a follow at Jim Beaver 15 on Instagram and Twitter at Amy Hood 71. Both of us on Facebook. And uh, don't forget all those back episodes available on, at downanddirtyshow.com or through our app. And uh, man, we are uh, going to sign off today. On behalf of Amy Hood, I'm Jim Beaver, and we will see you next week. Ha, 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 ha.